A railgun is a powerful weapon used by various factions in the expanse for space combat. Railguns are large and powerful cannons that use electroconductive rails and electromagnetic force to accelerate a dense metal slug at very high speeds. They rely on mass and speed to punch clean through ships. In the Expanse TV show, we get a good look at the projectiles from slower firing weapons, such as the torpedo. However, the projectiles of a railgun are fast and we don't really get a good look at it. Which is why this piece of concept art is fascinating. It was made in season 3 by Northfront and it shows the firing sequence from a UNN railgun platform. In stage 1, the projectile assembly is fired. In stage 2, the sabot casing separates as the round leaves the railgun. In stage 3, an air burst of the sub projectile maximizes the damage radius. What I find most interesting about these stages is the final stage, the air burst that maximizes damage. This leads me to question, does every railgun in the show have this set of firing sequences? Or is this just for the UNN railgun platform? If we slow down this video of the Rossi firing its railgun, we can see the weapon charging and firing a projectile. I don't see the stage 2 casing being separated, so I'm going to brighten the footage and slow it down further. I still don't see stage 2 happening. This projectile does not hit its target and does not have a stage 3 airburst. When the railgun projectile from the Donager hits its target, it cuts clean through the ship and I do not see a stage 3 airburst either. The stage 3 airburst is fascinating, however just firing a metal slug at high velocity would be powerful enough to cause serious damage without the need of an airburst. It seems like the stage 3 airburst is a function of certain projectiles and or railgun systems as we see with the UNN railgun platform. I wonder if the airburst is unique to the railgun platform or with the right munitions other railguns can have this functionality as well. I mean it might help with certain situations with near misses. Having an airburst in this scenario might be more likely to hit the target. When it comes to stage 2, even with the UNN railgun platform, it is difficult to see if the casing separates as the round leaves the railgun. I'm going to slow down and brighten the footage to see if we can spot any separation. I just don't see it. There is a second flash of light after the projectile is fired. This could be stage 2 happening, but I cannot say definitively. There is also this weird butterfly effect that's happening to the round, which could be stage 2, but I don't see it peel off, so I still think this is not conclusive. Talking about the railgun projectiles also makes me wonder if a railgun projectile took out Shed. A PDC round would be too small and a torpedo usually explodes on impact. So the only thing that would make a clean cut through the Donager with a hole this big would be a railgun round. It is also interesting to note that railguns have different sizes. Depending on the size of the ship and if they're standalone like the UNN railgun platform, railguns can vary in size and I assume the projectiles they fire vary in size as well. This is a scale chart I made in Season 6 showing the different sizes of railguns from the UNN railgun platform, the Agatha King, and the Donager. The production wanted me to make this scale chart with these specific railguns, so I did. I believe they were references for the railguns we see on the ring station. Talking about sizes of railguns, if we compare the Rossi railgun, it is much smaller than the ones on this chart because the Rossi itself is smaller than these railguns, so obviously the Rossi's railgun is much smaller. If you want to support me in the channel, please consider checking out my game on Steam called The Indigo Parallel. I just released a new update, adding some new branching pathways, and it's also on sale for a week, so 
go check it out now and get it while it's on sale. And thanks for watching.